or um, just as cold, if not a little, but just prettier. You know. Yeah, I was gonna say, it always feels a little warmer to me than yeah. in Minneapolis. Uh, the snow insulates us, right? Or at least the yeah. humidity. The lake does, I think, keeps us a little warm. At least that's what we tell recruits, right, Case? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, we have a few minutes. I was gonna say, Bill Rose, hello, Bill, just put yeah, in the hello. chat. Um, any comments, Matt, about being a male coach on a female mm -hmm. team or for a female team? Yeah, um, yeah, that's a good question. You know, I I haven't, hmm, I think it's a privilege first, you know, and I, I think it speaks to um, really the players on the team and the openness of receiving coaching from whoever it's coming from. I think, um, you know, for me, I've been part of college sports and a product of a household where, uh, you know. Oh. Did we lose Matt? I think we did. <laughs> I can't finish his sentence for him. That is unique <laughs> to his experience, I think. So Bill, hopefully he'll sign back on and finish his thought there. <laughs> yeah. Uh... I think it was um that warning came up on my screen about being oh. live streamed now and you could hit oh, got it. back. Yeah. Back. Hey. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Bill, I was Bill, you're my neighbor. I you know where to find me for the rest of that answer. Um <laughs> I, apo I apologize. I wasn't I wasn't ducking out. No, it's <laughs> it's <laughs> It's 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 an in short it's an honor you know I think we're we have a shared goals and we have uh, uh, some sh some shared um, objectives as a group and I think we're all on the same page uh, as a result uh, mutual respect and when working hard together you know I I like to say this always the most competitive human I've ever been around was my younger sister um, she was a brilliant setter in college and someone that I looked up to. Um, and that's maybe one of the first things that I learned uh, growing up with, you know, the mom I did and the sister I did uh, as an athlete, um, that uh, when you're competitive towards something, uh, you're going to get a lot of hard work and it's about surrounding the right people, or, you know, surrounding yourself with the right people. So anyway, it's been an honor and I can't believe I've been doing it now for 12 years. I've coached men and women uh, and for a combined 20 and uh, I've, I've enjoyed most all of it. Yeah. I'll try not to get rid of myself during meetings. Okay. Um, am I still here? Okay. That, <laughs> yeah, that's I a good step forward. Yeah. Yeah. I promised myself I wouldn't do anything. And here I did. I cut myself off and we're good. Okay. <laughs> now it looks like quite a few more people have joined us. Welcome everyone. Uh, we're just kind of hanging out, chatting informally. Feel free to throw some questions in the Q and A if you want. Otherwise, Casey, Matt, and I are just gabbing away until we get started. Yeah, I see on the on the question and answer another mild winter here in Chicago. I I miss Christmas time in Chicago. I think that's one thing I've learned. The difference between the two is um, just the amount of snow. But Christmas time in Chicago is a great time. The time of year, I don't know, wherever you are, you kind of hope for a little snow and white Christmas. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we do a lot of our recruiting down there in Chicago. Um, we and as Casey can attest to from from Chicago all the way up to the UP uh, through Wisconsin, we do a lot of it, but um, Twin Cities, of course, right? Yeah. yeah. Very good. At the power three there. Good job. Power three downstate. <laughs> yeah, Chicago. Yeah, I, I can keep going. Yeah, it's a triangle <laughs> for sure. It's, you know, it, it not in LA, <laughs> John I, Baker, not in LA. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish. Yeah. Not in Los Angeles or, or Florida. Hard to get them off the uh, addicted sunshine. I get it. Mm -hmm. well, I feel uh, someone, I think, asked that the other day with <clears throat> admissions kind of expanding beyond yeah. the yeah. Midwest, if coaches are also yeah. Part of that 
expansion as well? Or if, I mean, we can talk about that when we get to recruiting here about why. Yeah. I mean, the answer in there, short, the short answer to that is yes, you know, and we we were kind of laughing about the LA suggestion, the wink, and, um, but, you know, that's not entirely true. We've had players that have really lived all over and for whatever reason uh, have a connection to Michigan Tech, and that's definitely something we can talk about during the recruiting piece because um, as much as I'd like to think it's the volleyball that is the main factor, which of course it's playing volleyball here is part of it. Um, you know, the academic reputation, of course, and everyone else's experiences here, which have, you know, um, when you talk to someone who's had a positive one, it means, it means quite a bit from the recruiting standpoint. Mm-hmm. No, spot on. All right. Well, in an effort to be mindful of everyone's time, I think we could maybe get started right on schedule here. So sharing my screen, hopefully it's coming up okay. So welcome everyone to Husky Bites. Uh, on behalf of Dean Janet Callahan, uh, I am moderating tonight. My name is Jennifer Young-Lucas. I'm the Assistant Vice President of Alumni Engagement at Michigan Tech and a graduate from the class of 2009. I'm also a proud alumna of the women's volleyball team, which is why I was so excited to temporarily sub in for Janet tonight and moderate tonight's webinar with Casey and Matt. Uh, so before we get into some housekeeping and introducing our speakers for the night, I just wanted to briefly touch on what alumni engagement here uh, at Michigan Tech means uh, and does. So let's see if my slide will advance. There we go. Alumni engagement at Michigan Tech is part of the larger advancement uh, and alumni engagement office. And we aim to help alumni connect to each other and to the university by providing meaningful event opportunities, volunteer opportunities, and communications. So displaying on the screen now is just a small sampling of some of the events that we are offering in the near future. And uh, it just kind of showcases, we host it all over the country. Uh, and also locally in the UP. So I invite everyone to visit our alumni web pages on the Michigan Tech website. That link at the bottom there is a nice shortcut uh, so that you can see what's going on on campus, uh, check out the volunteer opportunities that are available, maybe see if any events are happening near you. And if there aren't any in your area, I of course invite you to uh, reach out to us in the alumni engagement office we can talk through setting one up and what it means to be an alumni co-host or answer any other questions that you might have. And I also never want to miss an opportunity <laughs> to promote our marquee event of the year, which is Alumni Reunion Weekend. Happens on campus each year in early August. This year it will be August 3rd through the 5th. And even if you aren't celebrating a milestone reunion like our honored classes on the screen here, uh, all Michigan Tech alumni and friends are invited to participate in the festivities. So mark your calendars now and make a trip to the UP. We would love to see you. So back to the, the Husky Bites here, I'm showing the schedule for this spring 2023 lineup. Uh, which Janet has told me it is the seventh season, which is hard to believe. It's such a strong tradition she has started. Um, and I think many of you on the line attend each Monday. So quite a few exciting webinars coming up still this semester, including next Monday, uh, Anna on the screen here, will be talking about solar energy in cold climates. And Janet will be back moderating that next week along with two PhD students. So uh, be sure to tune in next Monday, February 20th for that. A reminder that for Husky Bites, obviously we are on Zoom, but we also are live streamed through Facebook and all of the webinars are recorded. So if you'd like to check out the recording, they are made available uh, on the link on the screen there shortly after we wrap up for the evening. Uh, and Sue or Danielle, please feel free to let me know if I miss anything on the housekeeping end. But the, the last thing I wanted to say before I let Matt share his screen is just 
Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, and please feel free to continue to use the Q&A and the chat options like many of you were doing before we officially got started. Uh, I know that Matt, Casey, and I really want this to be an interactive and fun conversation with all of you on the line. So don't be shy. Uh, please plug in your questions. All right, so Matt, I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to let you pull up your screen. Okay. I will do some introductions of you and Casey. Can we all see the slideshow? Okay, and Looks great. okay, we are we're we're looking at a picture of a recently graduated senior. Well, not graduated yet. She's still in school, but uh, just finished up her fifth year with us. Grace Novotny digging a volleyball. And we can talk about maybe what, a little bit of what that actually is. Um, before we do any introductions, can I just say thank you for having us on? Um, I I had a hard time believing it was seven seven seasons now doing this. I've been on before. Um, I was fortunate enough to to be on a series before with other coaches, and there were other other coaches talking about their sports. So you know, I I feel a little added pressure talking just about volleyball, but we'll. We'll make do, and I, I I appreciate everyone being here for it. So I wanna I wanna brag on Jen really quick too because she she probably wouldn't. Um, she's a former All American Husky volleyball player. Is that do I have that right, Jen? Is that yep? Um, middle a middle blocker for the Huskies and was a, a first team All GLIAC player and um, one heck of a volleyball player. And and for her to be back here at Michigan Tech, um, you know, being the coach of the program, having uh, an ally and, and an alumna, you know, nearby has been fantastic. But what she's doing for uh, the school overall has been fantastic. Welcome back, Jen. And um, I know she's not going to brag on herself, so I had to uh, ahead of time. <laughs> now, thanks, Matt. And I think Casey, you're a middle blocker as well, right? All right. Oh, dangerous. Any setters yeah. on the line? Feel free to feed Casey the ball. Yes, we love it. <laughs> Very good. All right. So I'll we'll just move along, Jen. Okay, perfect. Well, Matt, let's talk about head coach Matt Jennings. Uh, in 10 seasons as the head volleyball coach, uh, he has orchestrated an impressive rebuilding of the Michigan Tech volleyball program. So under Matt, the Huskies have gone from last place in the GLIAC conference to being nationally ranked and consistently in the NCAA tournament. Jennings has also twice, is it twice been named the GLIAC coach of the year, right, Matt? That's right. Um, and yeah, a couple of years back. That's right. All right. Well done. Uh, in his, in addition to his responsibilities with Husky Volleyball, Jennings also currently chairs the NCAA D2 Midwest Region Women's Volleyball Committee until 2025. He will have that commitment and also has both teaching and administration roles at Michigan Tech. Academically, the Tech volleyball team has continued to excel under the leadership of Matt and his fellow coaches. During the 2021-2022 school year, the team earned the National AVCA Academic Excellence Award for the 10th year in a row with a team average GPA of 3.63. That is amazing. Uh, before making the move to the UP, Jennings served as an assistant coach and recruiting coordinator at the University of Pittsburgh. The Chicago native, we were talking about Chicago earlier, played men's volleyball at Augustana College, uh, not the one in South Dakota, the one in Illinois. No, that's, make that. that's right. <laughs> Thanks for clearing that up. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I was a two-time team captain and a four-year starter, playing outside for three seasons and switching to setter for his sophomore season. That is an interesting change of pace. Yeah, not recommended for everyone, I would say, just put it that way. I don't know how well it went. Uh, must be pretty good. You were a captain after that. Um, Jennings earned his bachelor's in business administration and political science from Augustana and his MBA from St. Ambrose. Jennings and his wife, Mary, were married here in Copper Harbor, Michigan in July of 2015. They reside in Houghton together with their his four-year-old son, Jack Henry. Jack's five now. Yep. Jack's five. Ellie is three. And, oh, sorry. I didn't mean, yeah, but yeah. And no, uh, okay. Connor is 10 months. Yeah. See how I jumped all over that. Yeah. And <laughs> they are, um, th I've learned this too. I'm not a native youper. I am uh, lucky enough to be living here and um, absorbing the culture and been brought up, you know, been here for 12 years, but proud to say that my three 
little ones are uh, native Uper. They're born here, uh, the three of them up north there in Calumet. So proud of that. Oh, that's great. All right. Anything I missed, Matt? Before no, we... that's good. And I'll just say um, the one thing, you know, uh, I will, uh, will, Casey will prove this here in a second. And uh, Jen certainly exemplifies it. Um, but I did not think I would be here. I didn't know how long I would be here for. And I, I, um, I'm so grateful that I've been here now. Yeah, 11 seasons. And uh, Michigan Tech is the kind of place where um, you know, when I first came here and thought about moving here, um, you, you know, you're going to be surrounded by good people working hard on, you know, not just your behalf, but behalf of the program and the student athletes. So um, one thing that, you know, re records or even grades, uh, you know, don't necessarily always reflect is the character of the group. And uh, I'm certainly proud of a lot of the stuff we've done, sure, on and off the courts. And, we're, you know, we're going to have up years and, and down years, and that's what teams do. But I'm most proud of um, – the, the people we've been able to build the program with, you know, and the, and the quality of person. And um, I think Casey's a good example of that, like I said, and, you know, um, I don't think that that really shows up necessarily uh, when you talk about a, you know, a time frame of 10 or 12 years uh, at a place. It's really been about the people I've been able to uh, surround myself with. I'll just say it that way. Mm. No, that's well put, Matt. I think many on the line, whether you participated in athletics at Michigan Tech or not, or had friends or family, uh, the people definitely make the place here for sure. No um, doubt about it. All right. Now we have Casey on the line with us, a uh, 6'1 middle blocker in her third year at Michigan Tech, majoring in, uh, is it biological sciences with a focus in pre-veterinary medicine? I was that, but I am currently exercise science. I've switched my major a few times. So, yes. <laughs> okay. No, that's great. Pursuing your passions, right, Casey? Oh, that's great. Yes. Um, and holds a 3.73 GPA. Uh, Casey grew up in DeForest, Wisconsin. She says her two older sisters are her biggest role models and her parents are the biggest supporters of her volleyball career. Casey was just elected captain by her teammates. Congratulations, Casey, on that. And outside of volleyball, she enjoys traveling, volunteering at animal shelters because she loves, I see loves in all caps, so it might be worth stating again, animals. Uh -huh. uh, she enjoys reading, hiking, and also holds uh, on-campus jobs that keep her busy but involved in the area. And worth pointing out for those who weren't on the line earlier, Casey is joining us before she has evening lab. Um, so talk about just the epitome of the student athlete experience yeah. here. <laughs> you know, and we can't. Practice, we, yeah, this and class. Right. Case, do you want to talk a little bit about your, your path here? And, uh, how, you know, uh, even academically, you said you switched majors. And um, I just want to say first, uh, Casey's one of a kind. Uh, she was first ballot named team captain. We we graduate last two seasons, team captains, back-to-back -back years. And so we, at the end of this year, we were, uh, you know, in search of um, – the beginning of our our new leadership on on the team and we took a first round uh you know election i guess uh for a captain um at the beak was at the end of the semester case right yeah yeah i think so yeah before we went away for a break and uh there was K casey was a, a clear a clear pick we'll probably have some additional captains join her as the uh I'm sure she was looking forward to that too, but it's, it should say that it uh, it speaks very highly of Casey and, and the things that she's done. But she Casey came to us uh, wanting to study one thing and is now studying something similar but different. Is that right, Case? Yeah, I kind of came in and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. That was kind of the draw here too, kind of because of all such a good academics here. So no matter what I went into, I knew I was going to get a good degree. Um, I kind of decided my freshman year that I wanted to do pre-vet, so that was where the animal part came in, but shortly after, actually, this season when I was injured, I was working with PTs and athletic trainers, and I kind of saw like a passion for going to physical therapy, so that is my current path, is to go to PT school when I graduate. Yeah, if I could, and if I could speak to that without even kind of, I guess, disclosing too much about the injury, um, you know, talk about a silver lining there, you know, someone has a, it was a major injury too. It wasn't, I, I was right next to her when it ha happened. I saw it happen. It was she, the way she handled her rehab. Um, it makes sense 
to me knowing now that it may have been a process that spawned or turned uh, her academic path into something now that she may be doing because she took that rehab so seriously and did it so well um, and with a lot of poise and character and toughness and the things that you probably need uh, to do it right, uh, especially when trying to get back out there. And she did. She she rehabbed during uh, the injury happened at the beginning part of the season, and she really worked hard to make her way onto the court. So that that I think that makes sense to me, Case. Yeah. Can I, um, can I answer a couple of the uh, Q&A here? Is that okay? I was just going to say, yes, please do, Matt. Uh, I think especially the graduation rate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Happy to answer that. So um, many, to a I answered the, the most recent question, and the, the question was, what is the graduation rate or my graduation rate or our graduation rate? And, you know, how many of our students are STEM? Uh, a large majority of our students are STEM. And so we've had, um, we have and have had, Pretty much every form of engineering you could think of, uh, we've had it. Uh, computer science, human biology, biology, chemistry, pre, you know, chemical engineering, all the engineering you could think of. Um, we are we are seeing uh, more and more accounting in business students uh, uh, come to the team, um, and I, I think that's uh, a diversity of what we're studying is a good thing. Um, but we we definitely uh, we definitely have a. a a huge draw to the STEM uh, fields. If someone wants to study engineering and be able to balance good volleyball and strong academics, I think that's a, uh, a, a strength for us. In terms of graduation rate, very high, up, upper 90s or higher. You know, I we don't have a lot of turnover on the program. Um, our, our players really tend to come here and finish their four years or five, depending on um, red shirting and that kind of thing, but um, uh, we, I would, I can't think of, I mean, uh, pretty much everybody, um, and uh, I think that's as much a reflection of the university uh, and the quality of education and their ability to balance it, because like a lot of you know, uh, you know, the STEM area or a lot of these engineering uh, courses and, and time frames is full of pretty tough classes. So we're getting where, you know, players are coming in and they're graduating on time. Well, the vast majority of them are and uh, with good grades and um, studying some some challenging, um, you know, areas. Mm -hmm. All right. Is that good for right now? I think so, because I was going to say, Bill and uh, James have questions about recruiting, but I know we're going to definitely talk about yeah. that. Yeah. So Case, think, but yeah. Casey's Casey's uh, A plus. I, I just want to say that one more time. Um, Casey is and she's had a great career so far and she's going to continue to. But should we? All right. Maybe move on here. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think we have a poll question now. OK, very good. Kim will be throwing it up in the poll here uh, so that you all can answer. We're just kind of curious for those that are on the line with us tonight, how many of you have played volleyball or have a relative or friend that have played volleyball or have no ties to it, want to learn something tonight? It'd be interesting to see the mix. I guess it's worth saying there's no right or wrong answer here for, for the tech grads that are on. Yeah. Okay, we've got a good mix. Yeah. That's solid. Yeah, volleyball is getting easier to watch now. I mean, if you, you know, you can throw on, especially during Olympic times, but you know, it's, uh, it, the Big Ten network has done a really great job of showcasing uh, not just volleyball, but really high level volleyball. If, if, if you ask me and you're looking for more, uh, aside from coming to tech volleyball games, of course, um, and streaming those, you, you know, you get on, it's, it's out there. It's, you, it, it's, it, it's easier to watch it more, more now than ever, but. Right. And it's worth saying, make sure to tune in because that will make it more and more accessible as they see the viewing numbers go up gives yes. more reasons yes. to it. All right. So go ahead, Matt. I was going to say, take it away. Oh, geez. Okay. So we'll, we're going to continue to make this as um, a conversational as possible, but I think part of it is just talking a little bit about the game itself. And this will be, this will be somewhat brief, but right now we're seeing uh, Miss Novotny again, um, uh, 
playing a, a ball out of the stands, digging the ball out of the stands uh, or uh, in front of the stands. Um, we get, uh, I think, some great support here at Michigan Tech Volleyball. Um, I know it means a lot to Casey and and me, uh, uh, you know, just in general, the amount of uh, support we get physically in, in, in the stands at our games. And that includes not just our home games, but um, on the road, we've had alumni come and we've had some people come and join us. Um, but you know, we this this talk was called uh, you know digging it and it's fair I think to at least define what that means it means when a ball is hit at someone uh, very hard which was Jen's job which was Casey which is Casey's job which is my job some days in practice right Case uh, I still got it uh, believe it or not um, but it's uh, digging is what you do when the ball is hit at you and you're trying to keep it alive so. Um, the volleyball, we're talking today primarily about six on six indoor volleyball. Um, you know, there's variations of the game, which I think is a good thing. It's really kept it alive and fresh. And I'm sure we could have made a poll on this. You know, how many people are more familiar with beach volleyball? Um, and I would say, uh, I'm sure people are, you know, beach volleyball became Olympic sport for the first time. Uh, in 95, I think I have written down here, uh, it's relatively new. It's one of the fastest growing college games, including men's volleyball, I should say. Uh, varsity men's volleyball and collegiate beach volleyball are uh, both increasing their numbers nation nationwide for varying reasons. Um, but when we're talking volleyball here tonight, you know, Casey plays, Jen played, and I coach uh, indoor six-on-six -six volleyball, which has been a uh, sport since 1895 is what I came up with, is what I found. It's been, it's that old. It's been, it was founded in Massachusetts, Holyoke, Massachusetts, in 1895. It first became a Olympic sport in 64, um, and that's men's volleyball uh, first, actually. Um, we, uh, I guess the, here's the first volleyball team here at Michigan Tech. Uh, if this, you know, we'll, if we're looking up when the first year of Michigan Tech volleyball is, I think that's the next poll question. Um, you may be misled on the website and we can talk um we can talk, I can talk to our SID about that in a second, but we have had, should we just put the question up now? Yeah, let's do it. I was going to yeah. say, I'll be curious who gets it right. Maybe the image helps. Uh, yeah, I can go back. Yeah, there's the image. We have the question. Yeah, 72, 74, 76, or 78. And again, if you're on the website, it might not help you. Right. Necessarily. All right, some answers piling in. And unlike the last poll, there is a right answer. Here. Yeah, there's, there's, yeah, that's right, Jen. There's, it's a right or wrong. Okay, give everyone a little bit more time. But looks like so far, 74 is the most popular answer with 76 close behind. So Matt, want to share the... Yeah, the this is, uh, it's, it's 1974, if you were... If you were on here, if you were on the website, it may say 1974, I'm sorry, it may say 1975, but I believe it's 1974, which was B. Um, so yeah, 1974, it, we're, we're going on almost 50 years of, of volleyball here at Michigan Tech. And um, as someone, you know, uh, Bill Rose had mentioned, you know, being a male coach or of a female team, or just I think of it more as a steward of the uh, the program overall. You know, I, I think of Jen uh, played in the late 2000s, right? Or 2008 is your senior year. Is that right, Jen? Yep. Eight or nine, you know, um, you go into our gym and you see uh, what the team did in the 90s at times when they were uh, one of the best teams in, in Division II volleyball. And then you, I mean, there's a room over here full of pictures from every year on. I mean, I both, I, I can pick them up and touch them, pick the old pictures to, um, you know, just all the records of the program over almost 50 years. So it's an honor to me. I mean, it's over 1400 matches played uh, in that period of time. Um, we've had 
14 All-Americans at Michigan Tech Volleyball. Jen is one of those. Um, and that's that's quite an honor. Again, if you think about um, in just under 50 seasons, just 14 All-Americans and what it, you know, Jen could tell you what it, what it takes to get to that level. And uh, I've been fortunate, uh, you know, here to coach uh, three players who earn multiple All-American awards uh, for us a couple of years back. Um, we've been to the NCAA tournament with, you know, um, Casey's been on a couple of these teams, uh, but we, since I, you know, under in my couple 12 years here, uh, 11 years here, uh, we've been to the tournament for four of those times, you know, it, it really puts in a perspective over again, 48 seasons, um, you know, just how rare it is to get to the NCAA tournament and what it means to get to the NCAA tournament and, um, even rare for us over this much time as tournament or just championships overall combined, um, regular season and GLIAC championships. It's, it's four out of, uh, out of 48 Casey's been a part of two of those teams. Uh, we were fortunate to get two regular season championships under our belt, but, um, you know, the GLIAC conferences, which the conference that we play in is um, considered, I think, one of Division II strongest conferences. And that's not just for uh, volleyball, as Jen can attest to her sister coached for uh, Ferris State, had a, a great run there with some really great teams. Grand Valley has had uh, many, many good teams over time. Northern Michigan, as much as it is hard for me to admit, has had a run of very good volleyball over time. So um, we're in good company, and um, it's the hard work, I, I you know, with the with the likes of Casey and Jen that really have made it work. So, um, oh, did I get past this here? Okay, there we Should, go. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll hand it over to you, Jen. Does that sound good? Perfect. I was going to say, I know this slideshow when you're screen sharing, it gets very click happy. Um, so no, I go I, to here? <laughs> uh, we let's jump right into recruiting. I was going to say, it looks like the chat. Uh, it, it's by far the most probably interesting topic, both for those who yeah. have gone through the process for any sort of athletics recruiting. Um, but maybe especially for those who haven't, uh, it's such a different experience than other high school students go through when selecting the college of their choice. So I think to start, um, cause I certainly want to maybe grill Matt a little bit about what areas he goes to and what he looks for. But Casey, I would love if you could share with the group um, just what your recruiting process was like, maybe some core memories of your experience from first contact to what made you choose Michigan Tech. Yeah, no problem. Um, it's kind of a long time ago, so I'm trying to remember, but I remember starting out by like just putting together a highlight video and putting it out there for on like huddle or whatever it was at the time for everyone to see and then emailing as many schools as I possibly could just to get contacts and get my name out there to as many people as I could and uh, then you start receiving emails back and you see coaches at tournaments and that's where I met Matt and Cindy at the time and that was a really cool experience very nerve-wracking at the time to be a club player and having these coaches watch you was nerve-wracking but they were really nice and I have no complaints and then let's see you reach out and you get an official visit or just come on a visit just to see what it looks like, tour the campus, get to know some of the people, and I guess see if it's something you're interested in in the future, academically and athletically. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's great, Casey. And I was going to say, just knowing from our first poll, how many people maybe had no ties to volleyball before, um, Casey hit some of the maybe key buzzwords here with club volleyball. So unlike other sports, I would say maybe unlike football, for example, club volleyball is actually the place where the recruiting magic really happens versus the high school season. I think many elite players would say, you know, high school season is great for the formative experience and the, the extra touches maybe, um, but club volleyball is where you get noticed by college coaches, where you get more elite training and develop your skills. And so if you can imagine in any sort of large city convention centers where trade shows or industry conferences happen, just the 
the entire space filled with various volleyball courts all playing at once, uh, whistles and yelling and volleyballs bouncing all around. Um, that is where people like Matt <laughs> walk into the gym and go court to court and have to find people like Casey, right? Um, that stand out athletically and uh, as a volleyball player, and then of course align with your institution academically. Um, so I laughed, Casey, when you said it was a long time ago because uh, I might argue mine was a, a longer mm -hmm. time ago. <laughs> um, but uh, similar to you, as far as like club volleyball is where I had my experience. I'm so grateful to the club coaches that. Uh, have relationships and connections to people like Matt um, and help you through the process because it is a lot when you're getting letters and calls and you're considering the academics and your sport and you're trying to make this decision at 16 or 17 years old that makes such a difference to your future. Um, and so I would say, Matt, when you're walking into this gym, maybe could you tell people what draws you to a player? What do you notice first? Yeah. Well, that's really well said both by both of you. I think you hit on some important things. And Jen, you're right. I think the club circuit for what we're doing is vital. Um, and I think what you said about the high school experience being a formative one is also very good. Um, you can get both, you can get something out of both. And I think that's important, you know, for everyone to know. Um, look, there's a, a requisite amount of ability that we're talking about just volleyball wise when if, you know, if the answer is, sp you know, specifically when I walk into a gym, what do I look for? Well, I'm usually looking for, um, I know what kind of position I'm looking for. So without getting into what, all the different positions that there are, we have needs uh, for certain roles and positions on the team. And so um, I'm going into whether it's a, a gym like Jen uh, described, I was just at a huge national qualifier in the Twin Cities, um, the Northern Lights tournaments. I mean, there's thousands of players there, and there is all kinds of very impressive technology out there that helps people like me, who if they were to otherwise walk into a gym full of a thousand people, I would have, I would just be you know, paralysis by analysis. It just would be too much. And um, But there's amazing technology out there that helps both the a student athlete um, who's playing and the coaches looking to fill rosters because, you know, whether it's the upper echelon, division one, big 10, gophers, badgers, you know, um, or uh, all the way, all the way, there's a level for everyone. And there's players, there's, there's, you know, coaches from all of those levels looking to fill rosters for different needs. Academics is a huge part of it too. I mean, um, and you know, it doesn't mean that you have to be an engineer to be at Michigan tech athlete, but cause we certainly Casey being one of them. Um, but the, you know, our STEM, our core STEM areas, tend to be a huge draw for us when recruiting athletes. Um, and that's not just engineering, but definitely uh, a large part of it is. Um, you know, I can't, I, I, I like to say this, that everyone kind of gets here differently. Sometimes I'll go out and look very specific. I need a middle blocker and I know what club to look at and I know what club coaches to call and I know what uh, gyms to go to to see potential players. Sometimes, like Casey described, um, and oftentimes, a lot of, I mean, athletes are contacting coaches. We have needs. We we try to fill those needs in different ways. Um, oftentimes, it's players contacting us. Sometimes, it's club coaches contacting us. Sometimes, and this is um, a, this happens a lot, and I think that even more than some of the Division One places where I was recruiting before, um, I found in Michigan Tech, I get this a lot, like, hey, I graduated from Michigan Tech in 1993, and I have family friends whose daughter is really good at volleyball. I think you should check her out, coach. Mm -hmm. And like, and then I, I may, or like I played basketball in so-and-so year, um, felt like my niece is good at volleyball here or something like that, or a, a, a legacy student of some sort. Michigan Tech in some way is helping me recruit good volleyball players because of Michigan Tech. And that's primarily because of the academics, but also because of the experiences, regardless of what you've studied, for the vast majority of our um, our alumni. You know, it, it, even if you didn't play 
volleyball. For example, I have a recruit visiting in March from Minnesota whose mom was in the pep band. The pep band is a very special place. It's a very special uh, group to not just Michigan Tech, but our volleyball team. Um, they come uh, in full force to our games in the fall. We have a great relationship with the group. So things like that, um, Michigan Tech is it's a, it's a great place to recruit. You have to be a good student. You have to be a good student and not just a good student, but I think a responsible student, you know, someone that has a track record of of getting it done academically, you know, test scores and GPA are going to tell you a story. Uh, and those are requisite. There's, of course, your your typical requisites. We have a range of what we're looking for, but, you know, we have a pretty good idea of the capacity of students coming into the process Um during our recruiting. So there's a requisite amount of uh, ability. There's a, a need roster wise. There is academic, uh, you know, areas that we need to line up both both ways, of course, like it does us no good to having students here or one are going to struggle and two don't have anything that they want to study. And, you know, and I think that has to be part of it. Um, and, you know, and then, and then it's recruiting at Michigan Tech, uh, a peninsula on a peninsula where there's a, you know, a long winter and, but you have to lean in and embrace that. And, and, and I think you have to find students are looking for that too. We have seven, we have seven players coming uh, next year. So one thing you're seeing on the screen here is uh, well, Casey and her uh, loving and supporting family. Uh, she wasn't kidding. Uh, two of the the darn nicest people you ever meet. And um, once you get to know Casey and then you also get to know her parents, it all makes sense. Um, but yeah, they are Husky fans. And then our, our seven newcomers coming in from next you know next year uh, that's a, otherwise a very large class for yeah. a team of usually we are 15 to 19 um uh we're, we'll be 19 players next year one at almost every position here but you have chicago northern wisconsin madison area um downstate michigan and central wisconsin there and out of that group of seven so okay. well i was gonna say matt i think you hit the nail on the head with Folks have to be willing to come to the peninsula within the peninsula. And yeah. I can say it. <laughs> sometimes uh, these athletes might surprise you, right? I know suburban Minnesotan here driving in. I thought, where is the target? Where am I going? Um, For sure. Yeah, <laughs> where are the people? Um, but immediately Michigan Tech and the community, it just felt like home. And I think the conversations with the player, I see Casey nodding her head, no doubt she had the same experience. Um, the players, the coaches, the faculty that I met, immediately it felt like I was centered and that they were speaking to me and my personal future, not just that I would be lucky to be in their presence like some other coaches and universities made me feel, even though they were recruiting me. Uh, Casey, you might've had similar comparative experiences. Mm -hmm. But Matt, how important would you say that on-campus visit is to um, kind of convincing athletes to attend Michigan Tech? You said it. Um, Casey came up two times before she said yes, if I remember correct. Three, oh, really? three times, yes. So um, you're right. It's um, you, you look, I've had one player, uh, not our player from Italy. We had a player, a fine play from, player from Italy. She was an exchange student. She got to see campus before she came here. Our, our player from Columbia is like the exception. She did not see tech before she came here. And she'll graduate having succeeded here, uh, all conference and is on to graduate school. Uh, but like the, other than that, the, uh, I'll just say this way, our rate of success in terms of student athletes saying yes, after they've made a visit, it's pretty high. I don't want to put a number on it. And I, I, I don't know if I would under, like I would cut it short or I would exaggerate it. It depends, I guess. But I, I, I know it would be high. Like we, when students come here to experience the campus, either you love it or you don't. And I think part of the process is um, finding uh, students who are going to really value the, the degree and the degree potential not just the degree experience, but like that's part of it, but then like the degree to potential, but then also the degree experience. Like, and that's where I think you see a lot of people, uh, why people recommend tech or uh, there's some kind of tie to Michigan tech. But um, the short answer to that is uh, it's, it's very important. Part of the battle may be conv not convincing, maybe not even the right word, um, uh, encouraging, I think, you know, uh, potential, uh, 
recruits to to come make a visit because once they do, they, um, you know, we they tend to like it. <laughs> I love it. And I was just looking through the questions. I think we've answered some of how you find the academic yeah. students and the, well, I guess, what's your basic recruiting area was someone's question. Yeah. So um, we, uh, we hit the Midwest pretty, pretty strongly. So um, if you think of Chicago North through Wisconsin, um, that's everywhere from Milwaukee, you know, Milwaukee's got a nice base, um, um, Madison area where Casey's from has a nice base. And then you have the Green Bay area and some, you know, some, but Chicago all the way up. And then we'll go primarily east, I'm sorry, west to the Twin Cities. You know, um, there, the schools in Minnesota uh, at our level have very strong volleyball. Um, and uh, we compete for quality players there in the Twin Cities there's a great volleyball culture uh, there. And like I said, Jen's a product of that culture. Uh, it, it There's a, a tie with some corporate hiring that comes out of the Twin Cities all the way down to Chicago. So if you think of like, you know, where, where are you going to go take your uh, Michigan Tech degree upon a graduation? You could probably find our recruiting footprint in the same areas, you know, uh, down to Chicago, over to Twin Cities. And then, of course, below the bridge, all the way, all, I, I see someone here uh, talking about Central Indiana, agreed, um, Indiana is a hotbed of a lot of sports. Uh, we've had some success with players um, who have either played, you know, or from lower Michigan all the way down by the border, played some club over in Indiana. Um, we've had uh, players come from uh, Ohio. Uh, so that border region between Indiana, Michigan, Michigan, Ohio. Um, but, you know, ultimately, while we don't do a ton of recruiting in the UP, um, I think part of that connection or part of the experience, and I'm sure a lot of our alumni would would attest to this, is that that overall experience, that shared sense of adventure. I know for me, being here 12 years now or 11 seasons now, not from here, um, coming up here to go to school or coming up here to work has been quite an adventure. And I think that's part of the uh, recruiting appeal too, for even if you're from lower Michigan, um, it feels like a whole different place up here altogether. Mm -hmm. No, for sure. Casey, anything you would add to that? Because I was going to say, I definitely want to move into our other themes, keeping an eye on the time here. Yeah. I would just say that Michigan Tech is such a unique place. It's nothing like I've kind of ever seen before. So that was a big draw to me. It's just so special. And like all the people here I've met have been amazing. I have no problems. <laughs> awesome. All right. So I would love to move into maybe um, focusing on that student athlete life or current experience. And I think Casey, I'll probably fire this uh, first question off to you. Um, the life of a student athlete is balancing, you know, what the name says, academics, along with the, the passion and commitment of your sport. So could you fill in the group tonight with just maybe what a typical week or day looks like for you both in season and off season and how you juggle that? Yeah, for sure. Um, I would say a typical day in the off season right now, we wake up, we go to lift. It's pretty early in the morning, but you get used to it and it's good to have a routine. I would say I have about on average three classes a day depending on the day and then we usually have practice four times a week I would say and then you got to make time in there for um eating your meals um let's see homework obviously <laughs> and then also we do a lot of team bonding on the outside too and a lot of players have jobs on campus or off campus and are involved in research which is a huge part of being a husky because we have such a great research programs here um, I would say in season, it's a little different because we have more practices often and less lifting. So we would usually lift around two to three times a week. And then we're practicing every day, unless we're traveling, even sometimes we do when we're traveling, but most of the time, and then we'll have on the weekends, we'll usually leave on a Thursday if it's an away game, or if it's a home game, we'll be home on, we'll have practice that Thursday and then have Friday and Saturday, our games. And then I would say in season, it's a little bit more difficult to stay on top of your schoolwork as it is in the off season, but it's definitely manageable. And I've, I would say I've learned a lot about time management skills and organization through this process of being a student athlete. And you kind of have to if, when you're put in the situation, but 
yeah, I think that's a good description of it. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm like tired listening to you, remembering what it's like to, <laughs> to do all of that on such little sleep too. And, and you want to be part of everything. I think what you were saying is um, the, the volleyball players being part of research and having jobs on top of the volleyball. Uh, that's why you came to Michigan Tech, right? Is there so many other experiences that make the tech journey unique and you want to make sure you do it all. Um, and I think one of the comments, Bill Rose posted something um, that he thinks teamwork is a dominant part of volleyball. Absolutely. Uh, that is a correct statement, Bill. And Casey, you talked about some team bonding that you all do or team building. You Do you want to share an example of that? Um, in this spring, we've kind of just been hanging out on the sides. Like we'll have a team brunch where everybody will bring some sort of food and we'll just all hang out or like a movie night here and there. And in the past, I know in the preseason, we've done like scavenger hunts against each other in little groups and we'll do stuff like that and it's super fun just to get to hang out with everybody I mean I would say this team is like my best friends I I would usually hang out with them at least pretty much every day I would say <laughs> that's great and Matt I guess as a coach how do you go about encouraging these athletes uh to have grit to get through the day and the schedule and also bond together as a team even despite the the hard schedules what what do you do for them well I I think one thing I want to point out what Casey said that I I appreciate is that how she kind of uh didn't make a big deal about the traveling element of our uh, of our routine. And you see Jen and Casey's response to that. Um, you know, one thing to consider um, a, a challenging part of being a Michigan Tech athlete, I think, is the travel. I mean, um, it certainly helps us during home games. Like when we are the team that is constantly going below the bridge to play away games, we become used to it because – well, that's what we're used to. Like if you've lived in the UP long enough, you know that like four hours isn't anything or like things like that. And so when you are talking about the kind of, uh, uh, you know, students or student athletes that we have, like Casey is, that time spent on the bus work, you know, together is part of that bonding in season. I mean, there's nothing how, there's it's just how, I can't explain it really, but there's, the closeness that they get, the closest that is had, or how close they get by just traveling in mass uh, together. They all have schoolwork. It's all late nights. Um, it's long miles on the bus, away games to hostile crowds or empty gyms or some combination of both. Um, you know, the benefit is when we come up here and again, the home games, everyone's that's their one trip to the UP. It exhausts them. And we have a, a full pep band uh, behind us, you know, uh, going. But uh, it takes you know part of the recruiting is are we are we bringing in student athletes that we think can uh, manage that load? Uh, I talked earlier about being able to, I think, do, you know, a documented academic background of like I got I've gotten good grades I take my schoolwork seriously I'm, I'm I can get it done under the context or in the context of being a, a prep athlete um, I have to look at things to help see if that's going to transfer over to this level but I mean there's a couple ways to look at it you know Casey mentioned this too about um, you know the fall being a little more difficult it no question I mean it's the, the practices are more intense. The schedule was way more intense. Like they said, we leave on a Thursday and oftentimes we're getting back at like two or three in the morning, uh, four in the morning on Sunday morning. So like Saturday night, Sunday morning, and they're back doing their thing on, on Monday morning. So part of that is me scheduling out properly, you know, understanding where they are physically and mentally and emotionally uh, in different parts of the season, because no matter how disciplined they are, um, we're all human beings. It's going to, it's going to take its toll um, both physically because they're jumping up and hitting hard and doing all these difficult things, but then the pressures of winning or losing or performing well, and then the pressures of, you know, succeeding in a classroom. And um, maybe that's something we'll talk about a, a little bit at the end here, but um, I, I know that I'm surrounding myself, uh, roster wise with really capable young women who are hardworking, who want to be 
coach to get better and who want to work together to win. Um, they, it's amazing how we've, I think, learned to really get along when we need to get along and um, we stay focused on the task at hand in the gym. And I think, um, you know, having a good group and having a, a hardworking group that takes their studies uh, as seriously as ours do certainly makes my job a lot easier. So I don't know if there's anything we're doing to keep them going, uh, but we're, we certainly know that there's a lot of support. And I should say this, there's a lot of support here on campus to make sure this happens. Tutors and math, I mean, lab, writing labs and math labs and math tutors and um, peer mentors and Suzanne and people like Jen and Sarah Dowd on campus who um, provides an amazing service. Reese Edwards here um, across the hall, making sure everyone's in line. Joel, who's making sure our, our, our building is in where we need it to be. Um, I saw a question a little bit ago, like, do we have our own facilities? We share facilities with everyone else here. Um, it, the coaches work really well, I think, for the most part of making sure we all have space that we need. Of course, there's, there's always something you feel like you could use more of, but I think being resourceful is part of being what we're doing here, and you know, I think we make good use of it. But um, there's a lot of people working hard to make sure I have what I need to help the players um, hopefully feel like they have what they need to both succeed, um, you know, playing volleyball, but also uh, in the classroom. So. No, thanks, Matt. And you perfectly opened up what I was going to ask about next, mentioning Sarah, Dowd, and Reese yeah. there, um, because it's pretty unique, or, or maybe Michigan Tech is leading the way in an in innovative way, uh, which would be no surprise to any alumnus on the line, uh, with the Leadership Academy and the investment in having a clinical counselor full-time on staff, leading the way for student athletes and teaching them the importance of mental health and recovery and uh, proper diet, rest, all of that. Um, and you coaches play a big role in that too. So could you maybe give a brief synopsis of what the Leadership Academy is and what Sarah does and, and how you work with her? Yeah, so Sarah is, um, uh, she serves a couple different roles, but primarily as a clinical counselor here on campus that works specifically with our student athletes. Um, everything from, you know, one-on-one uh, -on -one counseling to performance-based uh, initiatives to uh, healthy lifestyle initiatives. Um, one thing that Suzanne, our athletic director, and I myself, but also Sarah primarily um, along with some other people, Reese and, and Sam and Suzanne's office put together a, a leadership academy that really serves um, some interesting areas of what it means to be a athlete or a student athlete from, you know, early on in their experience to like when they are, you know, uh, seniors are about to finish their career and then what life is going to be like outside of that. I know, Jen, you might speak briefly about the talk that you gave uh, as an alum uh, that came back and spoke to our leadership group. Uh, yeah, it was you and a handful of other uh, alumni. Is that right? Yes. Yep. So there was um, a hockey player, former football player, Nordic and cross country runner, I think, and a women's basketball player. And we were just um, speaking about our experience with the transition after graduation, when uh, this huge thing that was a major part of your life, right, the sport that you dedicated so much time and energy to uh, disappears. And maybe some athletes might struggle with a loss of identity or how to fill that time. You've been so disciplined, Casey said it, with time management and such structure. But then suddenly there isn't this coach maybe forcing you to do a workout when you're not in the mood to do it, but you know it's the right thing to do. Um, and so, yes, that was, I think, just one element of the Leadership Academy for the fourth years, maybe, um, as they prepare to enter the professional world and, and leave possibly uh, the world of athletics behind. Yeah, no, I mean, what what they're the idea being, and then, you know, if you go backwards from like just uh year, well, year one to year three, there's, we're, we're trying to get people in to come and talk to the athletes uh, about different forms of leadership and kind of creating their own organic leadership um, structure or idea or path. Um, and it's a, it's a project in, in growth, but one thing I do want to mention about Sarah Dow briefly, uh, you know, I think one thing that's um, that really put tech out ahead of other institutions here is 
you know, the idea of treating mental health as, you know, part of it's breaking down the taboo, at least first being able to talk about mental health in the in the realm of athletics, because we have this tendency to be, it's all tough, it's all tough, it's all tough, and not really talk about the mental side of things. As a coach who teaches sports psychology, I can tell you there are things that coaches probably aren't totally equipped to be handling, um, at least effectively, that I think a, a mental health expert should be um, uh, handling. You know, we have athletic trainers, very good ones here at Michigan. Uh-oh, hold on. Very good ones here at Michigan Tech, I should say. And um, we, you know, I think having someone here to handle some of the uh, the mental sides of athletics has been a really help. Um, it, how, how would you add to that, Casey? How How is Sarah, or just the idea of being able to express mental health uh, in, in college athletics now? Yeah, I would just say even expanding on Sarah and like have all of the staff here have been very supportive in everything I've ever had to deal with. I've had that on my back. Like I know that if anything ever comes up that they're going to be there for me. And that's just amazing to have in the university. I don't know how many others have that. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's really and, and maybe even beyond the mental health and recovery, we kind of touch on this with Casey's experience um, with uh, an injury. Um, someone yeah. was asking, what are the most common ones for volleyball? Um, and uh, maybe Matt, you can speak to that and, and yeah. um, the rehab process. Uh, well, knees, backs, elbows, shoulders. Um, you know, the mechanics of volleyball is a lot of swinging here. So you get a lot of these shoulder um, injuries. Uh, jumping up and down lends itself to ankles and knees, uh, cutting side to side, back, uh, knees and ankles as well. Um, some of it's totally free. Some of the worst injuries I've seen were completely routine and nothing, um, nothing you could have done. And, and then you learn afterwards, maybe why a little bit, but not always, it just depends. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's hard to say, but I would say, you know, a lot of the fingers, shoulders, um, knees and backs are probably the most common. Okay. And Casey, what is it like recovering from an injury? That's, I would say, added time on your schedule because now you're mm -hmm. there, like sort of participating in practice or at least cheering on your teammates for moral support. And then you have rehab in addition to everything else. <laughs> what is that like? Yeah, it is a time commitment having to go in outside of that and not having your team there with you for the rehab. Like most of the time we lift as a team. So it was really weird having to just have that one-on-one -on -one experience and not having the team there to kind of hype me up kind of in a little bit. Yeah. But um, I would say it was definitely an experience. Um, it wasn't the best, but um, I knew at the end of it, my goal was to get back on the court playing. So that is what I was working for every time I stepped in there. And I knew that my trainer who was with me in every step of the way had my back and was there to just push me and keep me going and make sure that I was okay, even if I was having a bad day, even if it wasn't related to my injury, she just made sure I was okay. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. Kind of what Matt was just saying, right? The mental health conversation, uh, the positive attitude goes a long way for that. Um, yeah, and rehab's not easy by any stretch. Well done, Casey. <laughs> thank um, you. And I should probably hop off. I have to go to class at seven, but thank yes. you for having me. <laughs> oh, thanks, God. Casey. Yes, thanks, Casey. A pleasure. Yes. Uh, and Matt, I was going to say, I'm keeping an eye on time. We still have some questions in the chat. If you're yeah. game to stay on a little bit, and then maybe I can. Awesome. Um, um, well, can we handle the weather delays on bus trips one? I like yeah. that one for sure. Um, not uh, so the 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 be one of the cool things about being a fall sport is that you get to see the beautiful leaves um, when traveling in the Midwest in the fall. Um, it's one thing I was told is that uh, it's a good sign if it's snowing during volleyball still because you're still playing. Um, and so you, that's usually when postseason. So we are lucky enough not to have too many weather delays outside of some pretty, you know, gnarly weather in late fall, but not really. Mm -hmm. um, I see a question here uh, about fin games with Finlandia. It's been a while, but we used to scrimmage with Finlandia every so often. I know um, other uh 
you know, other uh, sports on campus do every so often as well. Bill, thank you, uh, a good buddy uh, and a wonderful neighbor. I appreciate your support, Bill, and his wife come to our matches uh, often. I very much appreciate that. Um, do we get players to participate in other activities such as skiing? Well, if they know how to ski, that's going to help their chances. I'll just put it that way. If they know their way, um, but in the offs, no. Let me rephrase this. Um, if you... <laughs> Ripley, if it's like skiing for the first time in my life on Mount Ripley, I would say no, we'll wait till their career is done. Um, right. But if they know their way around and it's the, you know, um, it's a different story. If they want to get out on the tech trails, if that's the kind of skiing we're talking about, then more power to them. I, um, I look, I, I think the college experience in general is a, is a, um, it's part of why I'm here. I think it's such a great time of life and formative time of, you know, these young people's time. And so um, I want them to experience as much as they can. Mm -hmm. um, this is a great question that was uh, asked. I, I like this um, about uh, the NIL uh, name, image, and likeness. So is MA, uh, if the question is, is tech allowed to be active uh, in NIL? And if so, how does that impact recruiting? Well, um, we are, and it, you know, it's, it's so much in its infancy that it's hard to tell. Uh, I don't know how it's um, expanding it to our level. I would say it definitely doesn't impact our recruiting. So anything that's happened or happening with tech athletes at our level now is pretty minor and or um, has nothing to do with the recruiting process. What it, more of what you're seeing at the, you know, division one football or basketball or even other, you know, Olympic sports level now. Um, but it, it, it shows up in more, much basic, much simpler little ways. Um, and it, it, that would, I guess, kind of be hard for me to explain, but none of it, like I, I am, I am privy to pretty much none of it. I don't know um, really uh, when that happens. I, I'm not involved in any of it. It really is not influenced uh, Michigan tech recruiting at all. Mm. All right. And then I'll let you kind of handle this last one here. I was going to say, thank you. Christian commented about uh, career fairs next week for Michigan Tech, the Spring Career Fair and Industry Day. Um, and he commented that he and other recruiters have commented on how impressive student athletes have been from tech. And uh, kudos to you again, Matt, that the program is doing very well. Um, well thanks. And yes, no doubt. I think, again, with the character building and choosing and recruiting the right people, but also just the, the elements of tech. Uh, no doubt help all of that with the, the recruiting business. Um, I was going to say, oh, keeping an eye on, I guess we are right, right on schedule, Matt, we hit up, I think, top of the hour is when Jen Perfect. <laughs> closes this down. Um, yeah. So thanks everyone for joining us tonight. Thank you for the nice comments in the chat, Randy and Christian at the end there. Um, Matt, maybe if you, anything else, a closing remark you want to say to the group, when, when's the first game for. Yeah. Our, well, I just want to say thank you for, and, and for everyone sticking on the time. And I'm just super humbled that I was able to talk with everyone for an hour. I appreciate you listening to us and, and, uh, having us. I really, really do. Um, our first match is next year, the, the last day of August, August 31st, um, Look, if you if you can come check us out ever, that'd be great on the road at home um, on TV. Uh, I'm an advocate for all things of volleyball, of course, but of course, Michigan Tech, too. Um, what a special place. And it's been uh, it's just been a, a great time being here. Awesome. Yeah. Ditto. <laughs> Thanks, yes. Matt. Thank you, everyone. Right. Have a good night.